since the beginning of the podcast, I've always liked to have leaders in different statistical categories from the NCAA on from different levels. And this was one of the ones from our first year. A coach who I thought has done an excellent job. He's served in a number of different roles at his college and continues to serve as an assistant coach at Minnesota Duluth. And this is an interview with John Steger, who at the time was the defensive coordinator at Minnesota Duluth, and they led in several statistical categories over the time which he was defensive coordinator. A lot to take away from this one, so I wanted to re-air this. Definitely one that did not get a ton of listens because it was in our first year of the podcast. So enjoy this one, and we'll have more NCAA leaders from 2021 coming up in the near future. I am joined today by the defensive coordinator at Minnesota Duluth, John Steger. And Coach Steger has uh, certainly had a lot of experience, coached at every level basically. Currently, uh, Minnesota Duluth is a Division II program, and, and Coach has led them to some success on the field. They were number one in NCAA Division II this year in fumble recoveries, number two uh, on third down in red zone defense, which obviously are critical situations, and then top 25 in, in several other categories. So, Coach, uh, I'm really happy to have you here on the podcast, and thanks for joining us. Yeah, Keith, great to be with you. Looking forward to it. Coach, let's before we get into all the different things you've done on defense and the success you had there, let's talk a little bit about you know your background and your development as a coach. And I think uh, for all of us, when we look back on our career, we're able to point to uh, probably a moment or someone who, uh, number one, really helped solidify us in staying in this profession and you know taking that long view of uh, being a coach. And obviously, you know, 17 years right now at Minnesota Duluth, you've been at some other places as well. Um, you've had a great career, but what would you say are those key things that, uh, you know, looking back on it, really got you started? Yeah, I think the biggest thing in my career, you know, I, they say timing's everything, and, and uh, when I was, uh, I played at a little Division three school in, in Iowa called Loris College and was getting ready to graduate and uh, go be a high school teacher, and uh, the, the defensive coordinator there got a, got a job in Texas and said, hey, you want to come be a GA? And I'm 22 and said, sure. I'll come do that, and I went and did that for two years, and and then was getting ready to leave and and go back to Iowa and, and take a high school job, and and he uh, our our offensive coordinator actually got the tight ends job at USC, and he uh, the head coach said, well, hey, I'd like to make you the defensive coordinator, so I became a defensive coordinator at 24 years old, you know, been doing it ever since, and that was probably the the biggest thing for me. I was allowed an opportunity there when I was young to you know to kind of figure this thing out, and a lot of guys don't get that chance, and and you know very appreciative of that. That was uh, the the guy's name was Ralph Michelli. He was the head coach at Saul Ross then. He was a longtime coach at, at Moorhead State in Minnesota. But, uh, yeah, that was probably the thing that, that got me going the, the most, I would say, in the profession. Coach, as you, you look at, at you know your development as a coach and, and maybe point to some key things you've learned um, you could pass on to other coaches, what would you say are, are some of the key points in your development as a coach? Yeah, I think two things. I think, I think preparation, and I think that's what this game is all about, and, and, and that speaks to just hard work. Put your head down and go to work, and, and whatever situation you're in, make the best of it. I, I always say no matter where you are, it's big time, and, 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 and try to try to approach it that way. I think your players feel that, the coaching staff around you feels that, and then you know what happens after that it will happen. But I think the, you know just, just the hard work stuff is, is really a thing. I think you, you know even in today, I think you've got to try to outwork people, and that's a big part of this profession would you say uh, you know looking looking at that idea of the hard work portion of this coach has that changed for you over the course of time and, and adding in a lot of coaches always talk about working smart too how is that yeah, become yeah, part of yeah. what you there, there's no question you know you, and, and i agree with the the work smarter and not harder part of it but i i think as as you know as the games changed and technology's changed and you know things have progressed here you know, I, I think we you're spending more time even nowadays, even trying to work smarter. And uh, you know, that's as you go through this process, I just think, you know, you, you've got to continue to grind through it and enjoy it. I mean, I you know, I always tell my wife it beats working for a living. You know, it's it's when you when you can come to, to work and be around people that that you like being around and do something that you just have a passion for. There's a lot of people in this world that don't get that opportunity. And you know, I'm 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 thrilled every day still at, at my age and my experience to come to work and and uh, you know, I think the, the way the game changed over the years you, you know you, you continue to kind of reinvent yourself and what you're doing and that's a that's a you know a never-ending challenge 
And obviously, you know, I certainly commend you for doing that because I, I think the game starts to leave some of those guys and really doesn't matter your age. If you're not willing to adapt and change with, with the game, it's, it certainly will slip, slip away from you because, I mean, go back through the history of the game. It's constantly evolved. It's ever-changing. It's not, not like something maybe like, you know, a little bit more static like baseball, for example. I mean, yep. the, the game has evolved so much, and some of it is actually, you know, things come back and take on a, a, a little new appearance. I mean, you know, the, the spread offense, for example, and the way people use quarterbacks, you know, you certainly could go back to some of the single wing days. Yeah, no, quit, no kidding. It's not, it's not the same, but obviously uh, you have to evolve. How has that been part of, of your career? That's, uh, I, I think, trying to stay current and, and just understanding that, that you can learn something from anybody. There's, I think it's, we're all teachers, and, and finding the best way to teach things is, is, is I think, is, is a critical thing. I, I, you know, I go back, I was a young coach, I'll never forget this, I went to the, the National Convention, and it was, I was like in the, I don't know, late 80s, early 90s, I mean a long time ago, and I'm, I'm, I'm listening to, I went, got up early and went to listen to a junior college guy speak and, and uh, looked ahead of me and, Don James, who was the head coach at Washington, was sitting in the room. There's probably 30 guys in there. And they had won a national championship, I think, a couple of years ago. And there was a guy sitting next to him, and I had just overheard him say, Hey, coach, what are you doing here? And he goes, Well, hey, I can learn something from anybody. You know, I can find a better way to teach something. And that has stuck with me throughout my career. I, you know, even, you know, young guys now, I, I you know, hey, is that a better way for me to communicate with, with the guys I'm coaching? I think that's the key. And you've got to constantly be. You know, looking for better ways to do things. That that's how you keep improving. That's how you stay consistent. That's how, you know, you have sustained success. I think is 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 the kind of the measuring stick for me in college football. Guys that have sustained, uh, sustained success are guys that you know are able to do that and always want to continue to learn and and uh, don't think they have all the answers. You know, I think once you think you have all the answers in this game, you're in a lot of trouble. It's probably time to retire then, right? <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> Coach, in looking at that, you know, hearing you speak about those things, obviously, uh, you know, and being a teacher, that I imagine you're you're passing that down to the uh, the other guys on your coaching staff. And I know you have some some younger coaches on your staff, some GAs. Um, how does that what you've learned in that respect and learning from each other? How has it become maybe part of the culture of of what you do, especially on your side of the ball? Yeah, I, I think that's a huge thing. I you know, and I I see it as coordinator's responsibility you say to coach your coaches but you know with with younger guys especially just challenging them you know to ask questions and to do research and to talk to people and and uh you know i, I think one of the, the the great things about it you know if you've, you've got a good staff that are quote unquote football junkies you know you're, you're always i'm sure we're, you know we're watching a ball game you're texting you know hey did you see that what about that how are they doing that hey that's an interesting concept you know whatever and and you know, those are those are things that I think just promote, you know, development as a coach. And, and uh, you know, we've been able to do that, you know, going out. I think one of the great things about our profession is if, that we can go out and visit people and you can learn. I mean, we're, we're always, every year we're going to take a trip or two to go to some places and visit coaches and, and try to talk about things and, and, you know, try to get our young guys to understand that. And, and uh, you know, hey, we don't have all the answers. You know, we're going to try to figure things out. You know, what's given us trouble this year and what do we, surf, you know, foresee in the future here that, that uh, you know, that we've got to make sure we have an answer for? Because I think that's the biggest thing on game day is, uh, you know, there's there's not a more helpless feeling when you don't have an answer. And, uh, you know, that you, you try to have have you know a book that's got enough answers in it and and uh, and if you do then you've got a chance to have some success coach how important is it that that those answers find a a framework a structure within your system obviously it starts with with your philosophy and then you build your 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 playbook you know organize it around that but you know those answers obviously are important and i think you know we we talk about this with offensive guys on the show all the time about having a system and how important it is to have a system and that those answers aren't just a kind of out there as a grab bag that you know where you're yep. going to next and i guess essentially that's how how an offense or a defense operates is that it's a system that has levels of answers and that you you yeah, know where to yeah. go yeah, I, I can't tell you how critical I think that is. I, you know, one of the things that we've we've been a, a three four base team here for since really two thousand and three. It's what we do. It's who we are. It's our identity. One of the things that I like, you know, I get 
some younger college coaches or high school coaches that come in and, you know, we were a 4-3 team one year and now we're going to be a 3-3 stack team and I think we're going to a 3-4 so we want to come see you guys. And I'm, To me, the thing is, find a scheme, learn it, live it, and, and know it better than the people that are trying to attack you. Well, I, I know where the weaknesses are and what we do. And, and so, you know, you're always concerned about those things and, and whether people are going to try to attack and how they're going to attack you. And, and I think, you know, it's, it's, you go through, you got to understand, you're going to go through growing pains. That, that's part of this deal. And, you know, that's, that's what your, you know, your self scout and your, and, and your evaluation during the off season is all about is figuring out, Hey, you know, how can we defend this that we got that, you know, we, we, you know, we weren't necessarily, you know, we didn't think somebody's going to attack us that way or whatever it, it may be. But I think that's just a critical thing. I, you know, it's, it's, it's learning your scheme and understanding it better than the people that are trying to attack it. And if you can do that, then you're going to have answers. And that's, you know, I think a critical thing because I think the thing on game day is, you know, you, you know, you prepare all week and it's, we talk about preparation is critical, but on game day, you see things you don't, you haven't seen on film every week. And it's about being able to adjust to those and, and, and react to those. And, and again, having those answers is, is a critical thing. Coach, before, you know, you, you set that team on on the field, you really have, and I know we're limited more and more in NCA with the contact with players, but you have yeah. that period yeah. of time where you're, you're building the culture. Um, you're developing the leaders. I mean, at, at at some point, you know, no matter what you teach them, you need those guys to be able to go out on the field and, and believe in each other and believe in, you know, the vision, the mission, et cetera. What kind of things do you do to develop that culture within your unit? Yeah, to me, I think it goes back to a little bit of a program, you know, philosophy. And we, we've, we've had a lot of success here. We won a couple of national championships. We've been on the postseason 11 straight years. And, and, you know, to me, it's all about player development, Keith. It's about bringing kids in. I mean, we've – We've here we've generally done it recruiting regionally Wisconsin and Minnesota kids, but bringing kids in, and and then having senior classes that are you know 17 out of 21 that started or 21 out of 24 or, or you know 22 out of 23 something along those lines where you're able to keep kids in your system and develop them, you know going through a spring ball, going through fall camp, going through a season, getting them with your strength coach and 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 being able to to just be consistent year in and year out. So you know if you can do that then your culture because i think the the best thing about your culture is when your older players are able to teach your younger players what you want your culture to be and as a coaching staff you know you 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 try to enhance that but you know that that to me is the critical thing and when you get that it's a great thing now getting there is the tough thing you know and and i think at that point it it comes down to trying to recruit kids you know obviously they're athletically inclined but kids that are that are from a character standpoint that that you think are going to do the right thing and that football is really important too i think that that's the hard thing and you know i i would say recruiting is not an exact science you know the nfl spends millions of dollars every year trying to figure out who they draft and they mess it up all the time and you know we're trying to do it with 18 year olds and you know it's it's but but it is it is a critical thing to find those kids that you can bring into your program that football is important to that want to learn you know when you when you can do that and you have enough success doing that then your culture kind of takes care of itself i, I truly believe in that mm-hmm. well it is always about you know having good people and and obviously providing them some direction we've talked already a, a couple times about you know this profession being about teaching, you know, when, when you look at what you do with those guys, what are some of the best things that you and your staff are doing or, a, as far as teaching and preparing these guys both on and off the field? And, and again, that off-field part is, is, seems to be coming more and more critical at, at these levels and even at the high school level today um, that you maximize that time so that when you get on the field, you can be very efficient and keep yeah. guys moving through practice. I think there's there's no question about that. I, you know, it's it's with the limited amount of of contact that we have now. It's it's you know it's. I think a big part of it with kids is, and again, it's. I think from the position coach level, it, it's really understanding. And, and we talk a lot about this in our staff meetings. It's just in a, about our individual kids and, and understanding how kids learn best. You know, you've got some kids that you can get on a whiteboard. Some kids, you, you know, that, that you're better off, you know, watching film with, you know, and trying to be creative. I mean, I, you know, we've, you know, we've done some things with, we call them video tests. Like, for example, I coach inside linebackers and, 
you know, I've, I've got a, I've got a series of tests where those guys will come in, and it's just I call it training the brain for those guys. And, and at inside linebacker, where you're talking about reads, maybe where it's a, a situation where we're reading guard tackle, you know, the kid will come in and, and he'll watch a clip. He's reading the guard and tackle, and then as soon as the play starts, the the you know the clip goes to a blank screen, and he's got to write down on a piece of paper what did he see? You know, did he did he see a pull? Did he see we we've got five reads, and 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 he's got to write those down, and it just trains those guys and those kids can come in during the off season um, or I can send those to them and they can take those tests and 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 that helps that helps some kids I think especially on defense at, at inside linebacker and safety where you've got guys sometimes what I call big picture things where you're seeing more than one key those are things that are critical and and uh you know things like that I think being creative we've done I've done things with our DBs before I think too especially safeties that you talk about checking coverages and all of that stuff you know how, how do kids see the big picture I mean I've I've got a checkerboard in my office that, you know, I'll, I'll say, hey, come in and play some checkers with me. Well, basically what that is is I'll put a formation out and we'll put a defensive scheme out and we'll just, it's easy to move those things around with motions and shifts and stuff. And, and sometimes with the kids sitting across from me, that helps them. But I, I think that's the key. It's not, it's not a cookie cutter thing. You know, it's, 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 you got to find out, you know, it's, it, you've, you've got to know your kids. I think that's a big part of it. Yeah, definitely. Understanding their learning styles and, and figuring out uh, the best way because you're going to find it's, it's not the same for all of them. I remember someone sharing a story with me about Ricky Williams uh, in college and how he would miss all kinds of meetings. And, you know, they dug into it deeper and they found out, like, he, he couldn't learn in meetings. It was kind of a waste of time yeah. for him. He didn't see the value in it. So sure. um, certainly having all those different kind of tools. And that, that does make it the fun part of our profession, too, is, is the teaching side of it. I, you know, I say to guys all the time, you know, I haven't stepped back from football now for a year. What do I miss the most? I, I actually miss the, the practices and the meetings. You know, the, the games are yeah. fun, but but it, it's yeah. just great to get out there and see guys grow. So that's certainly a, yeah. a part of the deal. I, yeah. I always say, Keith, when, when when I walk on that practice field, you know, everything goes away, no matter what kind of day you're having. I mean, it's a, it's an awesome thing. And, 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 you know, to still be able to do that, I think that's that's a big part of the reason why I do it. I mean, those those two hours are, you know, that's a priceless time, you know. So you, you, you enjoy that. And, and uh, yeah, I'd agree with you totally. I know uh, one interesting thing uh, you, you might want to look into, and I've mentioned it on the podcast before, There's a, a it's actually a free app. If you've if you've done anything like Playmaker Pro or any kind of drawing yep. tool, you could you could do this. But it's uh, it's called Go Army Edge, and it's it's made by Army Game Studios. It's which is like the the government form of like an EA Sports or something like that, right? And mm-hmm. yep. so you go in, you put your plays into this thing, and you can create and simulate drills in like a Madden like environment. I took it <laughs> with my offensive line, and we we created uh, what we call the simulation room, kind of. Stole the idea because those guys were doing it with uh, the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts have in their facility a little turf area. It looks like a theater without seats, and it's turf. So these guys will get out there, quarterbacks, whatever. They use live film. But, you know, I think the idea for us was I put the offensive linemen out there, and they were able to drill against every stunt we might see, you know, which is so hard. You you can't obviously get the practice reps for any single one thing. So. I I, yeah. I was thinking on the defensive side, it's it'd be you know linebackers especially, putting them in a, you know in front of the projector, letting them be in the play, see run fits, and the, and the best part is then they can go and learn on their own on on their phones, which I'm I'm sure they love to do. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. That to me that and that's the thing. And if you can get kids, you know, you've got to you know it's just part of the deal now. I think you know if if, if you can they can relate to that for sure. And and that's uh, you know that sounds like a great idea. Coach, let's get into uh, your defense a little bit. You led the country in fumble recoveries, which means you were causing fumbles. Uh, you guys were number two in third down defense. You were number two in, in the red zone defense, which are obviously very critical to winning games. Uh, then, then running down the list here, number 11 in total D, only allowing 279.4 a game. You were 15 in uh, defensive touchdowns. You were 22 in scoring defense. 25 in tackles for loss and 33 in pass defense. So you guys excelled across the ball in several areas. First of all, you know, you mentioned you have a base 3-4 defense, but describe your defense to our, our listeners. You know, we're a pressure style. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, from a, from a schematic philosophy standpoint, our, our, our deal has always been, hey, try to win on first down so that we can pressure on second and third. It doesn't mean we don't pressure on choice downs. We will. 
but you know that's been that's been part of our deal. And I, I think the 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 biggest change is has for us from a schematic standpoint over the last couple of years is just with the the spread and the, and the things that you're seeing now is that we're playing a lot. You know, I say we're a base three four and we are, but we're playing that mostly against you know. 12, 21 personnel teams, and when we're playing 10 and 11 spread teams, we're playing more with a nickel mm-hmm. um, look and, and, and playing really a lot with just two down linemen and four backers and five DBs, but we're still, it's still, we're still using a lot of our three, four concept stuff out of that, and I, and I think, you know, the, the things that we've, we've gone to emphasize, I think to, with today's game, up-tempo, the way offenses stress the field, I think people throw the football better than they have ever at this point in, in the history of the game, and that's at every level, high school, college, obviously NFL is a different game, but you know, I, to me, just with that that being said, you, you've got to have answers in terms of you know different coverage concepts, pressure concepts. I mean, for a long time we were just three four zone pressure team, and that was all we did. And and, and you can't do that anymore. I, I, you've got to be able to you know give different looks and, and and pressure and give illusions that hey maybe you're bringing five when you're only bringing four or, or those kind of things. And 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 that's. You know, schematically though, we're, we're we're still we're still based out of them. Day one, that's what's going in. But you know, it's like everything else. We've we've kind of you had to adapt with the times a little bit. So, so coaching, you know, taking a look at pass defense, and you guys held your opponents to 179 a game, which in today's day and age, holding the teams at that that much in passing is is pretty good, especially at at your level. What has been uh, the the key for you in stopping these these very dynamic offenses? I'm sure you've seen RPO because it's all the rage today, and it seems yep. like everybody's yep. doing it. There's all kinds of answers you have to have. How do you how do you fit that together? Obviously, to something that your players can learn and go out and excel at. To me, that's the key. I, I think you're always limited. I, you, whatever position it is on your defense that has the most techniques. I think one of the things we always had to do with our staff at the beginning of the year is all of our position coaches, we're just going to sit down and say, how many different techniques are we teaching each position? And you're limited by whichever position you're teaching the most techniques to. Because mm-hmm. because you go to clinics, you talk to people in, in the off season. hey, this is great. What do you think about this? And then you come back, and, and you got to be able to execute it. I mean, I you know – saying that when you think you're weak in the nation and that's part of the deal with trying to get kids to, to, to play fast so I, I think it's 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 being able to, to give them some tools in their toolbox but not too many just just enough that we can defend you know different patterns different schemes that we can go to and and I think the other thing too is is we put a lot we, we give our kids a lot of freedom in terms of you know we're making a lot of calls on the field based on either the backfield set the split of the receivers if it's a coverage concept our coverage concepts are basically based by what the offense is showing us not necessarily by what I call them it's, it's almost like a check with me thing because as a coach I don't know exactly what we're going to get when they get lined up now sometimes i do sometimes with the up-tempo stuff it does help you because you, you can see the formation that's the one advantage i think you have as a defensive coach and, and you don't get much motion in that stuff but teams still i mean they're, they're huddling and moving around i mean you, you want your guys on the field to be able to get you in the right call it's just like a quarterback on offense i think you know hey you know where's the advantage and and, and to me it's teaching those kids a couple of concepts hey this is the best tool against this split this you know this say this split by the number one and two receivers this week Week. And then I think when you get in the game, it makes it easier to make adjustments because you can say, hey, we need to, you know, I don't like this call. We need to get away from this. And, and you know, it's something that you've worked all the time. I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a big believer in, you know, you, you have a, you have your base stuff that you work every week and that's really what you fall back on. And, and you've got a few wrinkles every week where, you know, you're going to, you know, I think especially in attack and pass protections and stuff, but you know the base stuff, though your kids, you know they, they've 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 got to learn that and have confidence in it, you know, and, and be able to communicate. I the, the the communication factor I think is a very underrated thing on the defensive side, especially in today's game with all the and especially all the formation looks we're getting now. I mean, I, to me that's the difference is you know you're seeing unbalanced and and you know tackle over stuff and and you know obviously all the spread stuff and you're seeing empty and you know you'll get twelve personnel teams that are going to throw it out of that. I've joked with some of my with some of my colleagues. I think you know defense. It's tough to coach defense nowadays. I think, and, and uh, you know, I'd, I'd be all for six formations, and you got to declare them by Tuesday for offenses because of all the stuff we're seeing now. I've, I've got a I've had a board in my office that we put formations up on for years, and that board has just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's you know I think that's that's the, where you're stressed. The, the 
plays haven't changed as much except the RPO concept, I right. think. It's just the amount of looks that you're getting and trying, you know, the, it's, it's trying to, to, to not be confused from a defensive standpoint. I, I think that's the, the, that's the biggest thing. So you've got, you know, I, I, you're fortunate here because our offense in practice gives us a ton of looks and we're able to go against that. I think that's, you know, that's an advantage we have and something I feel very fortunate about, you know, what we do on the offensive side. If you don't have that, and I've been in that in my career, you know, you've got to come up with some creative ways to service yourself so that you're seeing some of those things. Coach, uh, we mentioned Phil Longo, and you had the opportunity to work with him. And, and uh, on the podcast, we talked about, you know, for him, it's about 26 plays, right? He, he's going to have his 26 plays that he, he uses, and he's going to keep it limited to that, knowing that repetitions are important in practice, learning the players, etc. And I've talked with several guys on the offensive side of the ball who believe the, in those types of things. Is there a number or a sweet spot you want to be at in, as far as the number of calls that you're going to carry into a game? It really, and, and, and I not being evasive on the question, it really depends on the opponent and I think the personnel groups that you're seeing. Right. You know, if, if it's a limited number of personnel groups, then yeah, we're going to be limited. You know, and, and I, I think that the thing that's made it really tough on defenses nowadays is when you get when you get a personnel group, and you say it's 12 personnel, and, and you know they got two tight ends on the field, and you're expecting a two tight end formation, but you get a, an 11 personnel formation with three wide receivers, or you get a 10 personnel formation where both the tight ends are, you know, are, are you know, pass receiving threats, and, and you can't be in the same coverage look that you would be in, you know, versus a, you know, versus a two tight end run type base formation. I think those are the things that that have made it difficult and really expand your your sheet that week. You know, we we you know, for me, I, we're, we we're totally based usually off of offensive personnel, and you know, everything we're calling is based off of that. Some weeks it's easy, some weeks it's it's you know, hey, it's hey guys, we're gonna have to check everything. You know, if if, if they've got, we we look at offensive we look at offensive boxes like you guys look at defensive boxes, I think. But if there's only one on the box or one running back, then hey, we're gonna we got to be in this. And if there's two, then we've got to be in this. And if there's three, we've got to be in this. You know, and and mm-hmm. and that's all got to be done on the field. I, it, you can't call it. I mean, it's it's it's. I think that to me is is. And you talk about defending people. I think is is the most difficult thing. You know, when you when you start to look at it, if they've got guy or 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 if they get in a smaller personnel and getting some tighter sets and try to run the football. You know, it's it's all of that. I think affects your call sheet for the week for sure. But I, I you know, I, I agree totally with what you know. Phil had the, has the twenty six plays. I think you know we we've kind of went to a you know and, and they called America's Blitz, but we run that thing. It's just we run it about 14 different ways mm-hmm. and it's it's we don't run a lot of other pressures that's really it and we're we were like 45 percent pressure last year but it's just how many ways can we run that and and where we can come from and what we can do and, and just maybe change one or two guys so that you're not reinventing the wheel every week you know i i look at some people that have just have a you know you have a thousand blitz and pressures well how do you practice those i to me the thing about pressures is you've got to there's techniques within those pressures you know, whether it's edge blitz stuff i mean we do an edge blitz circuit with our guys because our corners our safeties our outside linebackers our inside linebackers can all be edge blitz guys so we work at we work at an edge blitz circuit just like you would a tackling circuit i mean it's there's different things back to you back away pistol quarterback under center you know all those are going to affect your angle and and how you do it and i think a lot of times in pressures coaches just tell kids well hey you're edge blitzing okay keep contained well what does that mean how do we teach that and i think that that was probably the biggest i I go back to you know my own journey here i it was 2007 or 2008 where we just said hey we got way too many these pressures are great and they beat stuff but we've got to figure out better ways to teach these and i think that that was a that was a a little bit of a turning point for us here just in terms of saying okay hey we're we're gonna take this one pressure and we're gonna we're gonna come up with a bunch of variations but it's only variations for one or two guys the other nine guys are doing the same thing they did and we put that thing in day one and and it's that's really part of who we are so coach the area you guys did better than anybody was fumble recoveries 25 in 2017 so obviously you're also uh taking the ball away from people how does that work into you know your practice how 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 did you guys obviously get yourselves to the point where you're creating that many turnovers yeah, I think, you know, and I go back three years ago, we were, 
I think near the bottom of our league didn't generate a whole lot of turnovers and and you know and, and I and I credit our staff a lot. Trey Diller coaches our D line. Greg Bowers our, our has been our DB guy, and then Brent Stiglitz who's our GA. And 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 we we kind of sat down and said, hey, you know, we we feel like we're we're coaching the drills in practice. I mean, we're running strip drills and you know scoop and score stuff and strip sack stuff, and we're we're doing all of that. The thing is, we're not seeing the translation. Mm-hmm when you get into 11 on 11 situations so why is that you know what are we doing and so we kind of brainstormed a little bit and came up with a bunch of things where we just said hey on a daily basis we've got to emphasize this with our kids and get it in their mindset so you know so how do you do that i we started in in spring ball and fall camp we are our ga every practice every drill where we're against our offense in an 11 on 11 or a, a seven on seven or maybe a you know an inside run kind of situation we're going to chart what we call rips and strips and obviously a strip is you know getting the ball out but a rip is the attempt to strip the ball out and it's almost, we call it it's like shots on goal. The more shots on goal you get, the more goals you score. Mm-hmm. The more rips you take, the more strips you're going to get. And so we, we charted those, we post them, and then in fall camp in our evening meeting, that's the first thing I put up. I've got a slide. We put up the guys' names that had rips. And if, if you get a strip, we flip them a candy bar and, and, and make a big deal out of it. So we started with that, and then we started looking at some other things. That, you know, One of the things I wanted our guys when they walked on the practice field to be thinking about, you know, strips and, and rips and strips and getting the ball out. So so what I did, which was, I think, a little unique, but I, I told our guys at the beginning of the year, I said, hey, I'm going to be the first guy in the practice field every day. I'm going to have a football in my hand. And when you guys walk on the field, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to, you know, you're going to, you get one shot at a strip or a rip on me. And so literally I, I, I stood where our guys walked on the field every day and it was kind of good because I saw everybody and, you know, we, you know, it was just, you know, kind of talked a little bit and I'd take a rip or a strip and I took a few shots. But it was, uh, but I think it was just a mindset thing. And then I think too, showing guys, you know, one of the things we did too was, you know, it's, it's amazing. College guys, you know, they see NFL film, they think it's the best thing ever. And so we went up and 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 just found some some NFL films of some guys, you know, stripping balls and stuff. And I, the the, the guy that I think is just amazing, Charles Tillman, he just he retired a couple years ago from he was with the Bears for a long time. And I think he, he forced over forty fumbles in his NFL career. And he had you know, they call it the peanut punch or whatever and, and uh but we showed our guys some films. There's a clip out it's about ten years ago in a game against the Titans where he had he had three strips in a game. You know, and every year in camp we show that tape and a and couple others and just to get our guys thinking about it. And and it and it's really done the trick and then the other thing too is then then we'll get into into the season. It's really trying to identify ball carriers that you know that don't protect the football and you know our guys i'll, I'll get a text from one of my guys hey you know the, the backup tailback i mean we're going to get a strip on that guy and that that was kind of the, the the thing that where i knew hey we got our guys thinking in the right direction mm-hmm. and you know i think it, and it's been good for our offense too i mean I, you know obviously our, it, it, it promotes ball security because you know we're we're constantly going after those guys and 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 our head coach it's, it's the, the only the only really goal that we have we have a goal board but we have a huge board in our in our locker room and all it has on its turnover margin that's it and it's a running total for the season and so the the guys see it every day and that that i think that the the biggest change has not been what we've done from a technique standpoint it's just been what we've done trying to create a mindset with our guys because you know and i and i really in, in today's game i you know creating turnovers winning on third down and red zone defense i mean i think that's how you that's how you win and you know you're gonna give up I hate to say it, you're going to, even though we didn't, we were good at this this year, but you're going to give up some yards. It's just uh, the way the game's played today when you got to defend all 11 with all the quarterback run stuff and the RPO stuff. Yeah, and obviously it has translated for you guys because, you, you know, overall you guys were two, number two in the nation in turnover margin. So um, yeah. obviously that does carry over to the other side of the ball. Coach, as you look at uh, this offseason that we're getting into, what kind of things are, are you looking to? to research or, you know, what are, are some areas of concern maybe that the offense are doing or, or maybe things that yeah. you're looking to get better at? Yeah, I think, you know, I, you know, I think in terms of looking at concern, I think it's, you know, and it, with some of the RPO gap scheme stuff, you know, are some things that we feel like we've got to have some better answers to. You know, the, 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 you know RPO started out more as a, as a zone read, 
you know, throw it. And, and, and I think guys creating extra gaps in the offensive side, especially with the quarterback being the ball carrier and teams running counter and stuff like that off of it, just being able to fit those things and talking to some people about those things. And, 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 and the other thing is we, we really, uh, you know, are looking to expand on. I, I think the, the, the thing I've been the most excited about for us is we, we kind of went through a little bit of a transition where we were a 3D, 300 zone pressure team, and then we really struggled because people can get the ball out of the quarterback's hands a lot faster now than they ever have. We've, we've played some man stuff behind it, but I think now just getting to the point where you're you're giving the illusions, like I said, where you're, you know, it looks like you're bringing five, but you're bringing four. Now, maybe the fourth guy's the corner and, and you know, two down linemen and an outside backer or whatever, but to speed the quarterback up, get the ball out of his hands where you're still playing zone concepts behind some of the route combinations that hurt you when you're playing man. So those, those are some things. I, you know, it's a constant deal, but, uh, you know, looking forward to it once recruiting gets over here. And obviously for, for you guys right now, uh, that, that deadline approaches as uh... – as we yep. get into the new year, but coach, uh, I appreciate you being on the podcast. Got one final question for you that I, I ask of uh, all of our our guests. And what's the one thing that you would point to that you guys do, whether it's as a team or or specifically as a unit, or even your position players? But what's the one thing you guys do that gives you the winning edge? To me, I I think it's all about getting kids to play with great effort. I I just it's you know schematically um, we're going to coach it up and. But I think it's it's the culture of hey this thing is more important to us than it is to you and that that takes some that takes some doing and 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 but it's a, it's a huge part I I just I believe that totally I think when you get kids that'll go out and bite and scratch and claw and love to compete you know you got a chance to win as long as it, as long as a coach you're putting them in the right positions and and if you can do that then then you've got a chance and and fortunately we've been able to do that more often than not but uh, it's 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 really i think uh, a big part of what we do coach how how can our listeners connect with you you can email me if you go on you know umd university of minnesota Duluth website my email is on there you know i'm at uh, on twitter i'm at coach steger umd it's my handle there so either one of those are fine you know and i i've had a lot of coaches through the years help me and and very willing to you know open about what we do and and uh you know as long as we're not playing you will uh you know we'll talk to you so uh that's part of the deal but uh yeah you know would uh anybody that wants to reach out uh no problem well, coach i appreciate you taking the time uh to join us here on the podcast and uh some just great ideas there for defensive coaches and and teaching in general thank you for all you shared yeah thanks keith i appreciate what you're doing here i think this is a really good series